Welcome back to another one of the Scuba Instructor React series. When it comes to movies, the only thing I like better than a good zombie flick is a nice shark thriller. So when I saw on YouTube that there was a woman reacting to uh, shark movies, I had to have a look. I'm Melissa Cristina Marquez and I'm a marine biologist. She's on the GQ channel, link below, and she's reacting to pop culture. Melissa is a marine biologist, and as you can see from the picture, she cleans up pretty nicely. So as I said in this video, Melissa's reacting to some shark pop culture. Let's see how she does. We've got the Meg. The Meg. Megalodon is a very, very, very extinct shark. Uh, contrary to what some things might say out there, it is no longer in our oceans, unfortunately, but it was a giant shark that a lot of people have likened to look like a great white shark, uh, even though it is actually more closely related to other sharks, such as mako shark. Okay, I did not know that. I thought for sure the Meg was a relative of the great white, so learn something there. I promise you, no shark is big enough to get an anchor stuck to it and be able to pull multiple people and other giant structures with it. But it's pretty cool to see in CGI. If an anchor got stuck on a shark, this shark would probably die. Unless it was like a whale shark or something, which is one of the bigger sharks that are out there now. Okay, now here's where Melissa and I start to diverge in our take on this movie. Now, uh, one of the things, when, when a writer of a movie script, um, they create a universe, right? If it's a fiction, they create a universe. And inside that universe, as long as they keep things consistent inside the universe they've created, I'm happy. However, I think it's not fair to judge things in that universe from rules that exist outside the universe. And that's what she's kind of doing. She's kind of judging a megalodon by today's shark standards, which by definition, it's not. It's a megalodon, right? So could that, I don't know, 10 meters, how long that thing is, uh, how, could that thing drag uh, a medium-sized anchor? I, I guess yes, right? I'm very surprised that nobody realizes there's a giant mass swimming underneath them. Would a shark ever approach that many people? Depends on how timid the shark is. There are some species of sharks that are quite shy. For example, hammerhead sharks don't like bubbles that scuba divers give off. And you usually have to like hold your breath or be on something that's called a rebreather that doesn't put out bubbles in order to swim with hammerhead sharks. What's your experience? I don't know. Uh, hammerheads not liking bubbles. I think in general sharks don't like bubbles and I know that hammerheads, the hammerheads, the scalloped hammerheads I've dove with, they don't like to dive, uh, they don't like to swim through the bubbles of the divers, that's true, but in terms of just seeing the bubbles, we were pretty close. I, I don't know about that, but I, you know, but <laughs> hold your breath, <laughs> yeah. We've just seen with them lowering the machine and the I'm assuming it's kind of looks like a hydrophone which emits like the dolphin noise and the whale noise that's not something that happens <laughs> I've never heard of anyone using that as a shark repellent or as a shark deterrent yeah I think the thing she's missing here supposedly the natural food of Megs was supposed to be in the day whales so she's the, so the movie the movie universe was thinking yeah you know so we're calling this shark with the whale sounds and that's going to take it away from eating this smaller thing. You know, who knows if that would have worked, but you know, she's saying in this universe she's never heard of that happening. Well, of course, because whales, I presume, are not the shark's preferred diet, right? They like smaller stuff. Dolphins and whales actually eat the same exact stuff as sharks. <laughs> what? Let me rewind that. Dolphins and whales actually eat the same exact stuff as sharks. Uh, some sharks, clearly not this sort, or clearly not a great white, right? Great white, they're eating big stuff, right? I don't think that, that you know, whales aren't eating big stuff, they're eating small stuff as a rule, except for, I guess, the, uh, the sperm whale eating large squid. But by and large, right, whales are eating small stuff, and uh, dolphins as well, right, small fish. So I think you could say a lot would, however, if you're comparing this to something like a great white um, or, or a large predatory, <laughs> a large predatory shark, I don't think you could say that it eats the same things as uh, whales and dolphins. Uh, so I don't know, Melissa, on that one. Next up, we've got Lara Croft, Tomb Raider, Cradle of Life. All right, Lara Croft, all you gotta say is, Angelie, I'm there, I'm with you. I don't remember if I saw this movie, let's check it out.
That was very quick. All right, so first we're in this scene. I have not seen this movie, so underwater, and, and looks like pretty deep. And seems like she's going to be underwater for oh, quite a while in this scene. So that's going to be relevant to what Melissa says later. Let's check it out. Yeah, that's a great way of deterring a shark. <laughs> I probably wouldn't punch a shark in the snout just because your hand might actually end up down its throat. Instead, try to aim for the eyes. Or even better, aim for those gill slits on the side. That's where it breathes. All right, she lost me there. Let's see what we got next. So it's a really good thing that she has gloves on. So now we, we've been, I, I again, I, I have not seen this movie, so I, I don't know how long this scene lasts for, but you know, here Lara Croft, she's been underwater a long time. Not only that, Right, she's going through a lot of physical exertion, which means her muscles are using oxygen, right? Building up CO2. Uh, let's see what, what Melissa says here. Is it realistic that Laura Croft held her breath for so long? Yes, it's actually something that's called free diving and it's quite common. Is it realistic? Yes, and it's quite common. I guarantee you that was not quite common. You know, whoever long that was and however deep that was, that, that's not quite common. Um, you know, I've spent a lot of time underwater as a diver and I still cannot do some of this free diving that some other folks do for, for that deep and that long. Amazing. Jaws. So Jaws is probably one of my favorite shark movies, hands down. While it didn't inspire me to become a shark scientist, it definitely piqued my interest in what these animals were all about. Wow, Melissa. Jaws is one of her favorites. She, she's got my vote. I love the iconic Jaws music. The buildup of the music is amazing because you're just kind of sitting there in suspense being like, right, when's it gonna happen? When's it gonna happen? When's it, oh, there's the big boy. Yeah, I think we all could agree, man. That music and Jaws are some of the most iconic movie music of all time. Jaws actually helped kind of have a catalyst of not only people who were interested in sharks, but also people who were absolutely terrified of sharks. The author, Peter Benchley, actually regrets writing it and spent a lot of his time doing ocean conservation and trying to right the wrong of making sharks not be as vilified. But unfortunately, a lot of people still do cite this movie as one reason as to why they are so afraid of sharks and the ocean. I would have to totally agree with this. Um, you know, for me, as I said in the Sea Spiracy video that I did, um, you know, Jaws just scared me right out of the water and even in pools at night. So yes, I can definitely understand why the original author of this uh, book and screenplay was, was kind of trying to go back and, and right the wrong of maligning the sharks. But it was a great movie. Next up, we've got Deep Blue Sea. Yeah, I've got to say, I was really disappointed with the breakdown of uh, Deep Blue Sea because there's so many iconic scenes in there and she didn't really, <laughs> she skipped the Samuel L. Jackson scene. What the heck, man? That's one of my favorites. I have had it with these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane. We're gonna seal off this Yeah, here at, at, at what, 26, 22, she bites off the guy's arm and all she has to say, what is it? Um, sharks, they can swim actually that kind of side to side motion. <laughs> yeah, she says, yeah, sharks, sharks could swim side to side. She doesn't say anything about, you know, biting off this guy's arm or anything like that, but uh, what a shame. Um, yeah, anyway, she, she, she does a lot of uh, analysis on this one, but it was nothing that I was really interested in. And then after this, she does uh, Pet Detective. Yeah, not, not a big one on that for me. So there we are having a look at Melissa's take on some shark pop culture. She missed a few of the scenes that I would have highlighted, but we could find ourselves largely in agreement. I think her biggest, her biggest faux pas was in the Meg, man. She, she, didn't, put, she didn't put herself in that universe, and she skipped Sharknado. We should definitely check her video out. I mean, this video alone, this GQ video, got like almost two million views, so very envious of something like that. Well done, Melissa. Thanks for joining. Catch you next time on Scuba Instructor Reacts.